it's Shelby here. Welcome back to a little literary love. I'm glad you are with me. Today's video is going to be another wrap up video. We're going to be doing my end of July. Sorry, I had to think about what month this is. Oh my goodness. My end of July wrap up. So these are going to be all the books that I read in the latter half of July. But yeah, I'm in pretty good mood today. Um, I am also, I almost feel like I'm a little bit slap happy too because I'm very tired. My kids woke me up. Well, one of my children woke me up very, very, very early this morning. I have no idea why she was up so early, but now they're with their dad. So I get a weekend to myself and I'm just feeling like really good and chill. I just got some good yummy food in my tummy. I'm just in a good mood right now. So... We're going to talk about all the books that I read. I read a lot of good ones in the end of July, just, well, July in general. That may also be because I decided to read, reread a lot of my favorites. So that might have been why I felt like it was a good month because I was just like feeling it. Like I was reading these books that I know I love and it was just a good time. So, so we're going to get right into it. Starting off with Muscles and Monsters by Ashley Bennett. Um, this is the first book in her Le Leviathan Fitness series. Um, this is a like paranormal fantasy romance, what, what have you. Um, we have <clears throat> a human female and a, I think he's, a wolven? He's basically a wolf guy, um, male hero of this story. And the beginning of the story, they like bump into each other because she is a baker and she's running late, um, trying to get this cake into her vehicle to go take it to, I think it's like some sort of event or something. And she drops it and then he's there and he like helps her, um, pick it up and put it in her vehicle and they meet each other and they think about each other and they're trying to figure out like how they can run into each other again and she notices that he has this shirt that says Leviathan Fitness on it um and so she decides to go to this gym to see if she can find him again and turns out that he's the owner of this gym um and she's wanting to try to work out a little bit more and get a little bit more fit but she really has no idea what she's doing so she asks him to like help her and like be kind of like her trainer um but they also have like a thing for each other so i ended up giving this one three stars um <clears throat> I thought this was, it was very cute. It's more, or very quick. Um, it's very, much more like novella length. It's a shorter one. It was also very cute. Um, pretty steamy too. But I thought this was just more kind of like a so-so kind of book. Um, honestly, I don't remember a ton from it. I also kind of felt like the characters lacked a little bit of depth to them. That was just more... Um, like if you want to read those as more just for a quick, fun little time, um, especially if you're wanting to read something with like monster romance. Um, this also does feature a curvy female character. Um, steam on this is going to be medium high. It was cute, but nothing that I'm really going to like, especially rave about. Um, then I read The Harder They Ride by Coralie June. This is a new release from her. This is a dark romance, but it's a dark cowboy romance. Um, we have Clover and she is trying to like make ends meet, um, after their, her, her, for her and her sister after her father passes away um just trying to make do with the bills and everything but she's also trying to keep her little sister out of trouble her little sister likes to ride bulls and she has kind of caught the attention of this um <clears throat> I'm trying to think of what it's called like not necessarily like a gang but this group of like seedy individuals um outlaws sort of anyway she's caught the eye of them 
and this doesn't make Clover very happy um because like you said she wants her little sister to stay out of trouble um and she goes to this event that her sister is writing at because she also wants to support her sister um and she meets our hero of the story I don't remember what his name is um but he is also a bull rider and she thinks that he is a part of or like in with this like outlaw group um but they meet and our hero is immediately obsessed with Clover wants her for himself but he is also on his own mission so he is actually trying to seek revenge for um, the people that killed his family. Um, so that's what he's doing in this. Oh, and then they sort of start a relationship because he ends up saving her at one point from some things that happened to her. Um, so I gave this four stars. I did overall enjoy this. Um, I thought this was a bit insta lust. And I also felt like the progression of their love story happened a little bit too quickly for my liking but you know that's okay um I wasn't the biggest fan of our hero he is definitely more of a morally gray kind of character um which I like sometimes if they're done well this guy didn't really work for me I mostly enjoyed Clover's journey in this. So like I said at the beginning, this is a dark romance. There are lots of trigger warnings, including a on-page on um, sexual assault that is done to Clover. Um, there is also murder and lots of violence. So the biggest thing that I liked about this story is Clover and the like character growth and journey that she goes on through this book of basically going from like rock bottom and getting by the end to this place where she is a much stronger character. She is much sure of herself um, to the point where she like saves herself. And I love that. I love a journey of a female character that that's like that where it goes from that she becomes this like badass kind of character so that's why I gave this four stars the rest of the book was kind of eh, but I absolutely loved the character growth that Clover went through um steam on this book is going to be high and yeah and then Corley June has also announced that she's going to make more books and make this into like a series where it was I think just a standalone um so she is making I think two more books that are going to be a part of the series with this so then I read American Prince by Sarah Simone I'm continuing I continued on my um reread of the new Camelot series I don't really want to say too much about what this one is about because the first one does end on a cliffhanger and this one is just playing off of that and continuing on with the story um but this book does so the first book American Queen is told exclusively from Greer's point of view um if you didn't watch my other video so this series is basically a retelling of Camelot's story with um Lancelot and Guinevere and King Arthur except it's more modern time with the president the vice president and his wife so they're in like a menage kind of thing so the first book is told exclusively from Greer's point of view um about how she meets both the president and the vice president like before they get elected and how she pines after both of them um so we only get her point of view from in the first story and then when we get to Embry's story so this book is told we do get Greer's point of view in this as well but we also get for the most part Emery's point of view so what I one of the things that I love about Sierra Simone is just especially with this series, the layers that she weaves into this suit, this, to this whole story. So like Greer's story, we just get more, this is the story. This is like where we're at, like the baseline. And then Embry's, we start to dive a little bit deeper and deeper into the layers of 
what Embry's feeling and his motivations and what else has been going on in between things that just Greer has been noticing. Um, and yeah, I just, I love this. I love Embry. Um, there is a lot of trigger warnings in this book. So this is also, this is also a very kinky book. They do um, like to explore BDSM type relationships. Um, there is lots of male male in this one um, between him and Ash, who is our president. Um, so steam on this can be high. And like I said, lots of trigger warnings. So there is um, sexual assault. There is blackmail, and then we also have not on screen, but something in the past um, that gets mentioned uh, with incest. So just putting it out here. But this is a five star read for me. And spoiler alert: the other last book of the series is also five star because I love the series so much. It's one of my favorites of all time. Now we're going to go to a, another favorite of mine that I decided to reread. So the, this is um, Kiss of Shadows by Laurel K. Hamilton. This is the first book in her Mary Gentry series. So Laurel K. Hamilton has been writing books for a long time. Um, the her, Probably her best well known is the Anita Blake Vampire Hunter series, which I think she's publishing like the 30th book of that series. This series is much shorter. I think it only has like 10 books of the series. And I, this is like my favorite from her. I adore this series. So this is an urban fantasy. We have our character Mary. Um, she is part of the Fae, but she has run away because she kept getting challenged to these duels and people were trying to kill her and if she stayed there she would have died so she has fled and she's currently living in LA she's working at this um like as a detective like at a detective kind of like paranormal agency sort of thing um so she's working there and then all of a sudden there are these fae from the court that have come she thinks to try to kill her but then she finds out that they're actually wanting to bring her back to court um per the request of her queen who happens to be her aunt and she's worried because she thinks coming back means that her aunt wants to kill her um but then turns out she finds out that her her aunt actually wants to make her an heir because you find out some things are going on with the fake courts um and they need more life basically in the court and they think that Mary will be able to do this um so this series this is fae romance um I gave this four stars I just I love this this was like such a like nostalgic kind of thing for me rereading this book um it made me smile reading it just because it brought me back to a place when I first read this um and it just it made me so happy like remembering all the things that happened in here um this is a a story that it's like there's so much stuff that happens um there's like event after event after event like you think you know where this is going and then it it just keeps changing and going somewhere else um there are trigger warnings for gore and violence in this um and honestly i would say the steam on this is probably medium high we do get a lot higher steam as we go further into this into this series um because this ends up turning into a reverse harem series. Okay. Then I read King of Libertines by Pam Godwin. This is kind of a prequel novella to her Sea of Ruin story. Um, this is basically just, so Sea of Ruin, which I will get to in a second because I did also reread that one. Um, so Sea of Ruin is about Bennett. She is a pirate and her husband, um, Priest, who is another pirate. So this prequel novella is just capsule capturing um how they met so I gave this one three stars I thought this was kind of meh I honestly 
don't really think this needed to be written. It didn't really add anything more to the story, like the Sea of, sea of Ruins story, I felt. Um, I just, I don't know, I wasn't a biggest fan of this. It was very quick, and I guess if you're kind of hesitant or not really sure if you want to read Sea of Ruin, you could try this one out, see if you like it, but I don't really think it gives a good light to how Sea of Ruin is, like, the story. So, I gave this three stars because it was, it was fine. I just, meh. Um, then I read Uncharted by Adriana Anders. This is a romantic suspense story. This is like a survival story with some romance in it. Um, this is the second book of her Survival Instinct series. I don't know if she's going to have any more in this series. I think it may just be the two books. But I read Whiteout, which is the first book of this series, a long time ago. <laughs> at least a year if not a couple years ago so this was on um i have an audiobook subscription service scribd that i am a part of so this book was on there i decided to give it a to go um this is about leo she is a pilot and she is going into the alaskan wilderness to try to hunt down this man um that oh, that is in possession or at least knows where this virus is at um, and she needs to find him to find this virus so that these bad guys that want to take the virus and then kill a bunch of people don't get it um, but instead she finds Elias um, and Elias has been in the Alaskan wilderness and he has been kind of like a mountain man of sorts um he has been on the run for 10 years and you find out more later on why so anyway she's she finds him and her um her helicopter that she's in like crashes and this and then there's like these bad guys that are like after them too trying to kill them so this becomes like like i said a survival kind of story um I give this three stars. I really like the first book of the series. This one, it was okay. There was a lot of stuff that happened, but I also kind of felt like there might have been like too many like, oh no, like surviving kind of events in here that, I don't know, I just thought, thought there was maybe too many. And I also felt a little bit of like a disconnect between all of the thrilling things that are happening and the romance that is starting to take place between Leo and Elias. Um, I just, I don't know. I didn't, I couldn't really connect to the characters. I didn't really feel it. Um, not to say that this is a bad book. I just don't know if survival thriller romance kind of stories are for me so um moving on then I got to American King which like I said before I'm not gonna dive too far into what this one's about because the second one of the series again ends on a cliffhanger um but in this one we're just kind of dealing with the fallout of what happens in book two um and then we have the conclusion of this series. Um, again, this is a five-star read for me. Um, I was sobbing by the end of this. This is serious. Someone also writes very emotional stories. Um, and her characters are so complex. And that's why part of why there's so many reasons why I love her. But that's another reason why I love her. Um, so this we get Ash's point of view and his like struggles um and yeah I just I just love it this I love Sarah Simone's writing it's so freaking beautiful it just captured my whole heart like this is one of those series that like stays with you at least for me um yeah, I just, I love it. So there are more trigger warnings in this one, including a suicide, um, more blackmail, that kind of thing. Stimulus is high. Um, so death, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. There's probably some more that I'm not thinking of, but yes, just, I don't know. This, this is also one of the series that it'll definitely rip your heart out. 
Um, so if you do decide to dive into this series, be prepared for that. It is very emotional. Um, I know some people that I've seen like online trying to read this series and they get mad at it or they'll like stop after book two or they're afraid to go into book three and there is an HEA. Just know that there is an HEA. You just have to, you'll get put through the ringer first. Um, yeah, I just love this series so much. Okay, then I read Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. Um, so like I said before, this is a romance. We have Bennett. She is a pirate captain. Um, and she is married to Priest, who is another pirate. Um, but she has become estranged from her husband. She is mad at her husband because he sort of, well, not even sort of, he cheated on her. So she doesn't want to have anything to do with him, but he is back and he wants to talk to her to apologize. He wants her back, but she doesn't want anything to do with him. Um, so he takes something that belonged to her father. This is like a cherished prized heirloom from her father who has passed away and he knows this. And so now she has to, she captures him in hopes of trying to figure out where he took this thing that she wants. And in the meantime, she gets captured by Ashley, who is a, I think he's a captain or Commodore. I don't remember. Something like that in the British Royal Navy. Um, but he is also a pirate hunter. So he captures her. Um, and then it's her trying to weasel her way out of being captured and it's a whole thing. So when I originally read this book, and don't get me wrong, I love Pam Godwin, but when I originally read this book, I think I believe, I think I gave this four stars and I was con four, maybe four and a half. And I was contemplating if I was going to give it a higher rating. Now that I have reread the book, I have dropped my rating down to three and a half stars because after reading it a second time, I realized there were a lot of things that I found problematic about the story and that I did not really care for. Um, so this is a dark romance right from the get go. Very, very dark, probably like on the higher scale of dark. There are lots of trigger warnings for this book especially sexual assault, lots of sexual assault on page sexual assault. Um, there's also gratuitous torture, um, other types of assault. Um, but yeah, and all of this is on, on page. So if you're not a fan of that, probably should stay away from this. This is also a, um, thruple romance and MMF between ends up being between Bennett um, Priest and Ashley. But my issue with it is that with if I'm going to read like a thruple type of romance, I want that thruple romance or like more reverse harem. I want that to be from the get go. I want the entire group's relationship um, and working on that relationship on page. Or if you're not going to do that, like in the first book, it needs to be like a series. Um, so I think maybe I would have liked this better if this had turned into like a two book, like a duology or even like a trilogy other than just a one time standalone, because I feel like there was too much devoted. It was very just one sided between this like triangle that we have of our characters, very one sided between Ashley and Bennett most the majority of the book is devoted to their relationship and um getting them together then by the end that's when we find out that this is more of like a kind of like a second chance kind of thing so we don't get as much with priest and then we don't get as much with the three of them together it just feels like it was just added on at the end 
Um, I also kind of feel like the ending was a little bit abrupt and too quick. So I just, I don't know. I wish that there wasn't as much gratuitous violence and dark stuff that happens in this. Um, but that is fairly on par for Pam Godwin. She does a lot of dark stuff, which in most of her books, I'm okay with. But this one, it just, it felt like it wasn't really needed. Um, and I wanted this book to either have been a lot longer than it was, or I wanted this to be more of like a duology series or something. It just, I don't know, it didn't work for me. And I really, really wanted it to work. I remember reading when I read this the first time that it has so many elements that I want in a pirate romance. Like she picked them out that like exactly what I would have wanted. And then just the execution of it was not exactly there, at least for me. So um, yeah, gave this three and a half stars. Steam on this very high. But yeah. Okay, moving on. Then I read Mile High by Liz Tomford. Um, this is a contemporary romance. I read this because I'm trying, I'm wanting to try to read some more authors. I'm going to a um, book convention in April. I, I, think, I think it's in April. Um, I'm going to a book convention. So I'm wanting to try to read some more of the authors that are going to be attending this. So Liz Tomford is one of them. I've heard really good things about her, this series particularly. So this is the first book of her Windy, C Windy City series, excuse me. This is a sports romance. This is between Stevie. She is a flight attendant and she is a flight attendant exclusively for um, this hockey team. Um, so they're, when they travel to all their different games, they get the same pilot, like the same plane, um, the same flight attendants to all of the different games. So she is one of the flight attendants that is for this team. Um, and then we have Xander, who is one of the players on this team, and he is very attracted to Stevie. He is a playboy kind of character, so he is used to getting whatever woman that he wants, and Stevie immediately tells him no, be Partly because, number one, because she's working on this airline um, with her job, they have a no fraternization policy with any of the team, team members, coaches, what have you. Um, she is not supposed to fraternize or sleep with anybody. And then number two, she has been spurned in the past of dating a... Um, what word am I trying to say, of dating a sports star. She has been spurned by that. So she doesn't want to have anything to do with dating somebody in the sports world. Um, but Xander is very persistent. He is used to getting what he wants. And he is not going to let no keep him down. He is just going to keep trying. Um, I ended up giving this three and a half stars. I did not like this as much as I hoped I would have. This is a very cute story. It is a good story, but just for me, it was a little bit too long of a story. I wish there were several bits that could have just been cut. Um, but because it was so long, I kept getting bored throughout the story. Um, but the biggest thing that was great about this was Xander. And once Xander and Stevie do finally get together, I loved his positivity towards Stevie, especially because Stevie's somebody that she has a lot of body image issues um, because of like her mother and other people that she's been around in the past. Um, so she has issues with her body and he is great for her self-esteem and talking like body positivity. Um, and I loved that. That was absolutely great. Perfect. Absolutely love Xander. Um, it was just the rest of the story. Like I said, I got bored and I thought it was a little bit too long and it was just kind of okay. Um, so that's why I gave it three and a half stars. Steam on this can be medium high. And then the last little bit 
that I got in the end of July, I finished this like right in the nick of time, um, is going to be Cards of Love, The Moon by Sierra Simone. So this is just, it's very short, very little short novella. Um, there is like this whole like series of books, like the Cards of Love, um, that are supposed to be the different cards in a, oh, I'm drawing a blank. I don't know what they're called, but like the different like cards like there's the moon the sun the lovers death tarot cards that's it I knew it would come to me eventually um there's this whole series of like different authors that have wrote written different um I don't know if it, they're all novellas or if there was actually like full length ones in here so Sierra Simone did the moon um so this is a novella that is part of that she wrote part for part of the new Camelot series this takes place after the third book so I would not read this alone because it does spoil things for the new Camelot but this has our characters Merlin who does show up in the other one if you remember like Merlin from King Arthur and Nimue so I wasn't as aware of Nimu, Nimu as a character, but um, there is a little bit in the back after you finish the story of like notes, um, like a note page from Sierra Simone about like her research that she put into the entire Camelot story, um, including these characters. Um, so this is... A retelling of Merlin's story. Um, again, there's Beauty of Sem in here. Um, this is kind of a second chance, and this also delves into like past lives, which we get a little bit into in this series. Um, but we have Nimue. She has taken like stolen Merlin. Um, and has secluded him away to, I'm trying to put this in a way so that I don't spoil new, the rest of the new Camelot series, but she's trying to basically learn his secrets. I'll put it that way. Um, and yeah, and in the meantime, they start having some kinky sex together. I gave this three and a half stars. I thought this was okay. This wasn't really what I expected. I kind of wanted this to be a little bit longer than it was because I wanted a little bit more of their relationship. I just feel like there wasn't enough development with it. Um, and a more development with their love story. It just all felt like we're just supposed to know that they're in love and that they feel this love for each other because they have these like past lives where they were in love with each other and then they are also in this life. It was like a second chance for them. So I didn't really care for that, but I did like learning a little bit more about their part in this series, I guess. Um, so that's what I liked about it. Like I said, I would not read this as a standalone. I would only read this if you really like the new Camelot series and you just wanted more from it and wanted to learn a little bit more about some of the other characters. Um, also, if you want to learn about a submissive Merlin, because the woman in this story is a dom, um, which I don't read a ton about because honestly, like women doms is not what I usually gravitate toward, but, or towards, um, but it wasn't very interesting. And I mean, I gave it three and a half stars. I did still enjoy this. So there's that. And then, yeah, that was going to be the end of this wrap up for July. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I feel like I get a little bit rambly and I hope I wasn't too rambly in this video, but oh well. Um, and yeah, so if you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure you do so. Leave a comment down below if 
you've read some of these books or just some leave a comment about some of your favorite books I don't really care I like hearing from you all um and yeah that'll be it I'll see y'all in the next one then bye guys Thank you.